I'm Mike Bradner, and this is Capital Views, and we have with us uh, Senator Hollis French, who's the minority leader in the Senate. And uh, Hollis, you come from Anchorage. So uh, one of the big issues on the table has been Medicaid expansion, and uh, the governor has said no, but you get the feeling a lot of people are still talking about it. It's a big issue, and of course we've filed a bill to uh, try to have this conversation with our colleagues in the legislature so that we can fully vet out what the meaning is, what the economic impact is of expanding or not expanding, because it's, it's big either way. Well, the beneficiaries are also the medical providers, uh, not just the recipients. Uh, they get paid for services that they didn't get paid for. Sure, I mean, before. from our perspective, it, it looked like a pretty, uh, a pretty uh, good idea to expand because there's not only the uh, the social benefit, uh, the health benefit to 40,000 Alaskans. There's the economic impact of these federal dollars flowing through these patients into local clinics, into durable medical equipment providers, folks who own clinics, doctors who work here and provide services. They're all going to benefit. They're going to take those dollars and turn around and spend them at Costco, uh, at the ski area. They'll pay. Rent, and we're always, we're always hesitant to, <laughs> to mention the practical element of it sure, know, because you can see this, that. Right. It, uh, and it's a big area of opportunity for young people working in the medical field. It's sure, the it's biggest expansion. One of our fastest growing uh, fields in Alaska is medical care. And so you want to take every opportunity you can to maximize that and expand upon it. And Alaska is pretty complex. I mean, we have communities that are distant from each other. And sure, yeah, yeah. sure. But the, Medi you know, the Medicare, uh, the Medicaid expansion, uh, again, would probably affect about 40,000 Alaskans. Uh, low income, mostly working Alaskans, uh, would, uh, you know, provide them with some uh, fantastic benefits. And uh, it looked to us like it was a, a good idea to go forward on. Uh, the State Chamber of Commerce supported it. Anchorage Chamber uh, came out in favor. And uh, you know, it just seemed like uh, this is the, the sort of one of the foundational principles of Alaska has been to uh, go to Washington, bring home federal dollars, spend them here for our benefit to help build the state out, to help build the infrastructure we need, not just roads and ports and airports, uh, but also medical uh, facilities and, uh, and strong uh, uh, you know, practices. Now, our hospitals, I mean, they're compelled to serve, but people forget that in many cases either just because you have to do it, our physicians are too. I mean, they people come in and, and have inability to pay, and, and if there's they meet the criteria, yeah, there's a federal law that says that the hospitals can't turn uh, patients That's away, right. and uh, so it's a big item, you know, for them, and uh, uh, as well as other kinds of medical providers and specialists and. Right, I mean, and you get folks on Medicaid, you know, it just, it, it's a better system, uh, you know, and again, besides the benefit to those 40,000 individuals, probably 4,000 new jobs, 4,000 jobs created in the state because of that expansion, good for the economy. And those jobs, because they're, they're skills that are value anywhere. Sure, so, I mean, it's, it's always something you're trying to attract here, you know, whether it's primary care docs, radiologists, uh, again, durable medical equipment providers, it's a whole spectrum and, uh, and uh, it just uh, you know, baffles a lot of us that we would not put a few, sti you know, the, the, the split is 95-5 for the first few years, and so it's a, it's a huge benefit to the state to uh, avail ourselves uh, of these dollars. Is that, is that, is that the problem? It's 95-5 and then concern about it what It steps happens. down to 90-10 and then after that, you yeah. know, folks are worried, you know, what happens in the out years? Will the federal government begin to pull back on its obligation? And that's why we took the step in this bill to set up a trigger that if the, if the federal government's uh, reimbursement rate ever goes below 90 percent, then we're going to shut it down and walk away. Uh, it's, it's um, you know, not an easy step to take, but uh, it protects the state treasury from having taken on an obligation it's not prepared to fulfill. But generally something like this, uh, you get the feeling that people yell and holler about an issue and pretty soon um, they, you know, it's a benefit and so that softens and, and goes away. And the, the economic benefit looks so strong, I think that's why we're seeing it adopted in a lot of states around the nation. Uh, you know, no matter you know, what the political landscape is in that state, uh, folks look at the economics, look at their population, say to themselves, you know, how can I really stand in the way of uh, more medical care for the working people of my state? 
Is this still an issue? I mean, people come to you and call you. You know, it, it, it absolutely is because I think, you know, it's just going to be an ongoing problem about how we then care for these folks that, that don't have access to Medicaid. You know, are they going to wind up in the emergency room? Are they going to wind up uh, without medical care? Uh, there's some studies that show that you get, you get more deaths in your population when there's not access to medical care and that concerns a lot of the humanitarians uh, and uh, some of the religious groups. We've had good support on this from uh, AFAC, the uh, uh, Faith in Action Group. Uh, you know, they've been strong supporters, uh, as well as the Chamber of Commerce. And so when you've got churches in the Chamber of Commerce coming together on the issue, Mike, it, it looks like a winner. Well, and, and, you know, we've built a brand new neighborhood health clinic in Anchorage that's a beautiful available. facility. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. And uh, I, I was surprised uh, that Matsu is also building a similar facility. So it seems like you know we're already supporting this. Right, you're in, you're in that, going in that direction. Uh, let's just complete it with uh, good, strong uh, federal dollars. And our little towns have small hospitals. Sure. Uh, and I notice every year, you know, we're contributing something to Petersburg, Wrangell, Ketchikan because mm -hmm. they're isolated and uh, they're not. They're really not a very efficient model. So. And there's no choice, though. You've got to be able to treat people there, and of course, you know we've had high costs here in Alaska. We've, uh, you know, seen instances where it's it, it uh, you know, you save money by sending someone to Seattle to get a procedure done. You know, that's going to be, uh, you know, that's that's something that's uh, of concern. Uh, but uh, it really just goes back to you know taking those federal dollars, maximizing their application in Alaska, helping the 40,000 people who don't have coverage get coverage, and creating 4,000 more jobs here in the state. Alice, we're out of time again. Uh, this has been Mike Bradner with Capital Views, and we've been talking to Hollis French, who's our minority leader in the state center. Nice to have a chance to chat with you, Mike.